Hello everyone, I'm Stefan and in this Outbornsai video I will try to revive this abandoned yaka stump which I found back in January. As I was driving down the street I noticed something interesting by the side of the road. It was a yaka stump, complete with its root ball, that was left out to be collected as waste. A similar case to that of the other yaka I found this past winter. I'll leave a link to the video on my first yaka in the description down below. Judging by the size of this new yaka, it was a pretty old plant, so it seemed a pity to let it die if it could be saved. The soil was soaking wet and the yaka had obvious signs of trunk rot, which could be why it was thrown out in the first place. However, upon inspection, most of the trunk seemed to be in good shape instead of being soft and spongy, as you would expect from a yaka with extensive damage from trunk rot. So naturally, I decided to take it home and try saving it. After letting the soil dry out, it was time to have a closer look at the yaka and decide what to do with it. By the looks of the bark, the top of the yaka stump was probably affected by rot. Soaking in rainwater and being exposed to temperatures down to minus 5 degrees Celsius for who knows how long didn't do any good either. The rest of the trunk looks like it's in better shape except this area where there might be some more rot damage. I also noticed several recent buds like this one and this other one here, however they seem to be as dry as these older cut points. The parts affected by rot have to be removed so that's the first thing I'll do. I'm using a folding saw to cut off the top of the yucca plant that's affected by trunk rot. Sawing through the fibrous trunk wasn't exactly a walk in the park. A large sharp knife or a small toothed saw would probably be more suitable for this purpose. In the end I managed to saw through the trunk back to the last signs of trunk rot. So what is yucca trunk rot and what causes it? Like in the case of root rot, wet soil or moisture in yucca wounds facilitates the onset of fungal infections. Fungus infiltrates the plant through the roots or damages in the trunk and branch structure, like these cuts here, and then spreads leaving behind a soft, spongy yucca stem. To stop the infection from spreading, you must cut back to a healthy sanction of the plant. It's also a good idea to apply fungicide after cleaning up. Cinnamon is a natural fungicide. It also helps wounds dry out faster and smells really nice. So I thoroughly sprinkle cinnamon on the new cut. All the other previous cut points on the yucca stump received the same treatment. The area around this cut here required particular attention since the rot damage was more extensive. First I removed all the dead bark and decomposing tissue to expose the full extent of the damage. You can see how the fungal infection has spread around the cut, right below the bark, as well as towards the inside of the trunk, creating quite a hole. The whole area was still incredibly humid considering the yaka was left to dry in a warm room for over two weeks. This proves the incredible water retention capabilities of not only the live yaka plant, but also of the tissue affected by rot. I continued cleaning the wounded area using hard plastic brushes and a scalpel. Once I was satisfied with the cleanup, I applied cinnamon on all exposed inner tissue. Then came the tedious process of removing the old soil from the roots. I started off with a larger rake and began removing the bulk of the soil. Even though the roots will be pruned next, I took care not to damage them too much while cleaning up all the hard clay soil. Next, I switched to a smaller root rake and then to just a simple plastic stick for finishing up the job. Now that they are all cleaned up, we have to do something about these roots. Like all other monocots, yuccas grow this type of fibrous spaghetti-like roots. They form a wide network of thin roots, all originating from the stem, which are not one of the appealing features of the tree. I will reduce this mass of roots so that the yucca can stand flat on its bottom and will fit in its new pot. First I'm shortening all the roots that are really long and cutting off the ones that are growing straight down from the bottom.
Next, I have to establish a root plane and then decide what roots need to be completely removed. This here seems like a good root plane and if we go around the base we can see that there are plenty of roots starting from this level. So we can remove all the roots above this point. You may have noticed some of these offshoots that were buried under the original soil level. They are all growing too low on the trunk, so I'm going to remove them since I only want to have branching starting higher on the trunk. And this is how my yucca stump looks like after removing all the offshoots. As you would expect, the cinnamon treatment is also applied to these new cuts to prevent fungal infection. I'm going to plant the yucca in this large plant tray or saucer, so a bit more trimming is required for the roots to fit in the new pot. Since the plastic saucer has no drainage holes, I'm marking the location for several new holes. and then drill them using a 25mm force tool to provide plenty of range. Next come the draining screens and the new pot is ready for planting. I position the yaka roughly in the center of the saucer and then fill it up with an inorganic mix of perlite, vermiculite and pumice in equal proportions. After filling up the pot, I make sure that the soil fills up all the air pockets from around the roots and under the yucca and make the final adjustments to the soil. There will be no watering for the next few weeks to make sure that the new wounds dry up properly. From now on, it's up to the yucca to recover after these drastic operations. It's now exactly one month later and we have the first clear signs of life on the yucca. There's one bud popping up here. And another one here. But that's about all the activity going on for now. On the downside, however, the top of the trunk seems to have died back. The bark is not hard and firm anymore and when tapping on it you can clearly hear that it has detached from the trunk. See how hollow the top part sounds like in comparison with the lower trunk. I will let it recover some more and gain energy and decide what to do about the dieback in one more month. Another month has passed and we can finally see some greenery growing on the yucca. Now that it has some leaves to identify it by, it's clearly a yucca elephantypes or yucca gigantia, also known as the spineless yucca, just like the other yucca I saved. One of the new shoots took off and grew nice and strong, while the other didn't grow much in the past month. I've seen this before on yuccas that start growing a lot of shoots after being cut back, but only some of them take off and develop into strong branches. This top portion of the trunk is clearly dead and the dieback even progressed a bit lower. This, along with the curling leaves, could indicate that the yucca is still in distress. So what I will do now is cut off the upper part that has dried off and hope that in time, this shoot will help in healing over the large wound that I'm going to make. The dieback seems to stop at this level, so all these older cut marks will disappear once I make this big cut. So I will make the cut somewhere along this line here. I don't want to go lower and risk damaging the new growth, so if required I'll clean up the cut afterwards. I'm going to be using the same folding saw as before, so let's get sewing. The 
saw cuts easily through the dried up fibers, but it doesn't do too well with the fleshy material. So I'm switching to a knife for finishing up the job. By the look of the cut surface, it seems that this area here is alive, while the rest seems to be dead or dying. So I will now clean it down to healthy tissue. There's also some rot here. So I will first remove the dead bark to check the extent of the dieback, and then I start carving away at the affected tissue. The knife cuts well through living tissue, but doesn't do too well with dry fibers. So the progress was slow since I had to cut through both dry fibers and living tissue. Luckily the cuts were easier to make once I got down to healthy tissue. This is where I got after about half an hour of carving. My knife isn't the perfect tool for cleaning this middle part, so I'm slowly nibbling away with my concave cutter. I wish I had a larger one. Although this middle part is not completely cleaned up, I'm afraid that going deeper might do more bad than good. Especially since there is another dried up part right next to the largest growing shoot, which I don't want to risk losing. So I'm going to stop here since I already removed a lot of material. Again, I'm applying cinnamon on the whole surface and I will keep a close eye on the yucca, hoping for the best. Here's how the yucca looks now, at the end of July, about 6 months after I found it. The top shoot continues to grow nicely, while the lower one continues to do nothing. There are no more signs of rot or dieback, so it seems that the extensive invasive surgery was a success. There will be no more work done on this yucca for a while. I will let it grow freely, so that the leader thickens up to start healing over this large wound. And of course, I will be updating you on its progress in future videos. This was all for now, thank you for watching and see you in the next Odd Bonsai video.